All right. Well, this video I plan to do some welding. Um, rain permit. It's been kind of sprinkling on and off. Yeah, rain permit. Uh, I plan to add the uh, standoff back here, basically, to where I can hook the ramps into it, where they're actually, you know, hooked on and can't slide off. But I plan to, you know, I have have it right here and then stop weld a, weld one of the one of these hooks either here or have it underneath I haven't decided yet but then weld another short piece so I can put the the ID bar stop again weld another hook like I said either here or underneath underneath would be stronger but I might weld it right here just for easy and then have another long piece over here so the ramps can hook from you know here till it ends and then from here till it ends and um, do that so uh, it's not going to be a full bar all the way across it's going to be kind of staggered but uh, I, I do need some hooks back here so I can hook the just take the axles around the Jeep hook it around the axles and hook it straight back not way over on the side because when I do that it tries to go over brake lines or gets gets wrapped up and, and is taut against the tire which I'd rather not do that either so I'm going to weld D-rings weld that thing across the back there's also going to be some D-rings in the front I'm going to weld and uh, I plan on welding the tail light boxes in I think this video is just going to be on uh, doing some of the welding um, again no wiring just you know not yet I'm going to do all the wiring in one video um, so this is just pretty much going to be welding and fabricating and stuff getting tie down points and ramp hook points and well a light mount point for the center back here because I have to stand that triple ID bar off here because there's nothing back here but wood so you, you don't want to drill a hole because you have no room for wires to go but anyway I'll show you what I got alright this is what I got for the the trailer light setup in the back anyway and a little bit of extra but uh, for the for the bar in the back all I have is I think it's two inch by two inch by quarter or two inch by three eighths I got like three sections, two long sections and one short section so I can weld those hooks on the back. Now as far as lighting, I got these tail light boxes. Again, I got them from uh, uh, RMP Carriages. I got the li these lights, uh, are, are the boxes plus these lights and wiring. I got these from them also, but these, but these and these from him, them also. But then I picked up these right here. From uh, I picked up these from um, uh, e trailers because these are actually what they call uh, a work light. These are actual DOT approved trailer lights, apparent uh, trailer reverse lights. Apparently, the Department of Transportation only allows reverse lights on trailers to be a certain brightness. So apparently, these suck uh, as far as brightness output. These are in a work light category. Yes, you can put them in reverse lights but they're not DOT approved for a reverse light. But um, I'm not commercially hauling, so I don't have to worry about the DOT. Um, so this is what I'm using as a reverse light on the trailer, uh, part of a reverse light for the trailer. Uh, like I said, I also have some, some LED, uh, I think they're three inch round spotlights I'm gonna put on the trailer also for, rever for reverse lights. Um, just to make backing up in the dark easier, but also if I, I can turn my truck on, and, and not have it running, put it in reverse and have all my lights on to, you know, hook up stuff and everything else. So that's what I got these for. Uh, those, I don't know, I might use them on something, but uh, they weren't that much more. Um, I think the, these two were more than those two together. Um, just because, you know, these are brighter. Um, but yeah, I also got these. These are what's going on the fender, on top of the fender. Little, just side lights. But, uh yeah i'm probably gonna start piecing actually the first thing i'm gonna do is probably tack weld those d-rings on so i gotta go get those d-rings and uh show you about where i'm gonna mount them these are the lights i got from tractor supply on clearance i think because they were open box um but uh yeah you see they're supposed to be 60 bucks then they marked them down to 45 then they marked them down to 37 so almost half off um and i was like yeah um, for about 30 something bucks, 35, 36 bucks, I can order some online that will 
could could be good, or could be, you know, who knows. But uh, yeah, it's Traveler, whatever. But um, I plugged them in, and they're pretty darn bright. Um, they are a spot beam more than anything. But uh, that will still help. It does have some somewhat a wide angle. It's got a real hot spot, and then it spreads out. Um, it's interesting how the LEDs are. They're uh, in the center right here, and then they shine out to the side. But, uh, yeah, just lights, no wiring. You do get, uh, it does have a Deutsch connector on it, if I'm saying that right. It's got the two-pin uh, weather pack Deutsch connector on it. And then it's also had the, has the pigtail for the other side. So you can wire that into your own harness, which I'm, I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about paying money for a uh, wiring harness when I can I got plenty of wire laying around that I can in relay I can wire it up how I need to but yeah let me go show you where the D-rings are gonna go all right after doing a bunch of measuring these are the hooks I'm gonna use just some Harbor Freight ones same ones that I put up there <clears throat> I'm gonna cut them short though because I'm not bolting them down, I'm welding them down, so I'm going to cut them along here, so basically I'm just welding across here, uh, which is all you need. The ones, the weld-on hooks don't even have this extension, it just goes straight down, but I'm going to weld them, after doing some measuring, right here, on both sides, don't exactly know how far in that is, but uh, I, I measured from the center out, I measured where the ID bar is going to go, which is from there to there, roughly, I think it's that mark right there. And then I measured over 18 inches total uh, for the piece of metal. So that ends up right here. And then from there out, I measured four and a quarter inches. So that gives me four inches of play side to side plus extra for the, for the D-ring to sit right here in the center. So I'm going to weld those right there. Um, <clears throat> the D-ring's right there. Again, I'm going to cut the top and bottom off so, so it's going to be flush. <clears throat> And there's going to be a piece of metal that comes out right here for the ID bar and then another piece of metal is going to start here go up and out all the way to the end for the ramps and I'm probably <clears throat> depending on how the ramps are going to hook up I got those uh, oval those oval reverse lights I'm either going to mount back here next to <clears throat> those uh, up like stand that st st stood out over here <clears throat> or those, those boxes, I'm going to weld the boxes on over here with the brake lights and on top of it put the reverse light. I, I don't know yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So I already have everything marked out. I'm going to start, uh, get the metal and start piecing out where the metal is going to go, bend the metal where it needs to be. And then uh, figure out where the standoffs are going to go. And then uh, the first thing I'm probably going to weld is the D-rings and then do the, do the metal afterwards. But I, I want to kind of get the metal bent so I can get everything tacked up into place make sure it's fine. All right. After uh, a couple hours of work, <coughs> measuring, double measuring, triple measuring <coughs> to get everything centered up where I want it to on the trailer. And then measuring, double measuring, triple measuring, seeing which angle I needed it at. That comes in handy. And then measuring again, measuring again, you know. Using millimeters, actually. I used millimeters to get the distance for this bend because it needed to be close, you know. Millimeters is more accurate than inches. Um, but uh, it's like 24 millimeter, whatever. But anyway. Um, so yeah, that one piece goes there. I think it's 28 inches long, if I remember right. Um, then I got a space for that. I put a four and a quarter inch gap there, so that fits in the center. The D-ring is a four inch from side to a little over four inches from side to side, a little over. It's like three and a half or something. Uh, four inches, and then a little bit more to give it wiggle room. Then I got the ID bar standoff. Um, then I got another the other D-ring, another four and a half inch space. A four and a quarter inch space, and then the other piece right here. And then uh, what I gotta do is weld that on there. Uh, I guess I'll just take the paint all across the back, take those those off right there, and uh, I'll probably weld these two outside pieces first. Then I'll uh, maybe or ta first I'll tack everything on, see make sure it's right, and then uh, I'll go from there. Um, I'll probably go ahead and cut these down, but before I cut them down, 
I gotta take these and bend them out and bend them down. Um, you can kind of see I did that to these because there's not enough room in here for that D-ring to flip up and down. If you weld it all the way flat, that D-ring is gonna stay in one spot. It won't be able to flip up or flip down. So I gotta take these, hammer them down, and then take and cut across the top. And there's the back done. Uh, I'm not going to be able to put, I was going to put a support in the center of it, weld it to here, and then weld it to here. There's not enough room for me to even think about doing that. Um, so I'm just going to it, leave it as it, it is. Hopefully, you know, it holds up and doesn't twist off, fall down, whatever. Um, also, <laughs> once I got the settings on the welder done, you know, that's, uh, you got to make sure the settings are right. When, this specific welder because it's finicky. <clears throat> Once I got the uh, settings right, went fine. I had to grind some of the welds off because uh, <clears throat> like the first um, weld that I did, I had to grind off because it was it was spit and sputter and it wasn't working right. <clears throat> just, just have to fine tune the wire speed and then it goes like butter. But um, this one, I'm really not worried about strength because all this is is to uh, this ID bar on. So that's all that is. Let's put the ID bar on. These hooks are done. They're not going anywhere. I got a little bit wide with that. Wow, I'm all over the place. This hook is good. Um, like I said, I had to bend th these back and then I cut it off short and then burned them in. These welded pretty darn good. Um, zinc coated. Um, I'm kind of outside. But uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. But Try not to do weld anything zinc coated or galvanized or anything like that. <clears throat> it could make you sick. Right here, I welded a got a little bit wide on the weld, but uh, otherwise it's good. Shouldn't be going anywhere. These again, I wanted to put something between it, but there's just no room. I tried to weld a little bit of the backside on some of these. They didn't turn out very well. Uh, the ramps do fit on them. You have to put the ramp down on the ground and then hook it in. Uh, you can't hook it in and lay it flat because it tries to, it, you know, it kicks out. It actually won't go all the way to the ground. Uh, I am getting new ramps at some point, though. Uh, I got my eye on a set of aluminum ramps uh, that are six foot long. But, uh, yeah, I don't know where I was at. But, uh, yeah, these should be plenty strong. Shouldn't go be going anywhere. I mean, if those, if these aren't going anywhere, granted, I did these with a stick welder down at my buddy's house because his, uh, <clears throat> he didn't have any gas for his mix, so I just pulled out their dusty stick welder and welded it up and been doing fine. Those haven't gone, gone anywhere, and hell, I've even used this to hold the Jeep down, which I don't, no, I, I don't trust that as much as down here, <clears throat> which is uh, why that I, I would hook it underneath here, but you can't hook it underneath here. There's nothing to hook to. It's all flat. So that's why I have those there. So I can hook the Jeep or whatever else. But uh, yeah, I might try to put those on or see what it's going to take to put those on. <clears throat> Shouldn't be hard. I mean, I'm just welding it on. But uh, I'm rambling. So um, yeah, ramps on either side and I have it plenty wide. I made that just big enough for the ID bar. That way I have a, a lot of room right here to put the ramps. Granted, the shorter it is, the better it is, but I'd like adjustability for, you know, it needs to be wide for the Jeeps, uh, for, at least, for at least my Jeep, because I have 33s on it. But if you get a stock Jeep, it needs to be narrower. <laughs> Or let's say you put a car on there, it's got to be narrower for the car. So, um, I wanted a, a, a lot of adjustability. So, um, that's the reason I made it so wide. It will bend. You know, quarter inch would probably been better. But, <clears throat> 3 sixteenths shouldn't go anywhere. Uh, all you're doing is loading and unloading something. Uh, you're not, it's not, not like you're, you're, trying to put something on there and support it down a bumpy road. No, it, it's just strictly to hook the ramp to so you can load something up and down, so that shouldn't be an issue. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I think I am going to go ahead and take this light off and uh, <clears throat> see how everything is. I might tack it on. Um, 
we'll see. All right, well, this is actually where I'm going to end tonight, and I'll come back out tomorrow and uh, do the hooks in the front, and uh, that's it for for now for the welding. But yeah, I got the tailout boxes in. Um, they're not going anywhere. Um, I would have liked to move them out out more, but I don't want them too much past the wheel. They're already past the fender. They're not past the wheel, but they're past the fender. Um, I want to uh, eventually, they might be slightly crooked. I think this one's aimed down, and the one on the driver's side is actually aimed up a little bit. But uh, I, I got it flat and against the bottom, and uh, any tilt slash angle is going to be how this was welded on. Uh, but... Um, I want to create uh, like a skid plate uh, from here over to here, <clears throat> but uh, we'll see. I'll leave it like that for for a, for a minute and see what happens. It shouldn't go anywhere. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it, yeah, if it gets hit, you know, it it's most likely it's going to bend the bend or break that box because that box isn't fully welded on the inside. It's only spot welded in a couple spots um, to keep it together. Um, uh, but it should be fairly strong. Those welds are, I mean, you can tell they're going all the way through. So, uh, I mean, I welded it on the high setting, probably a little too high. You're not going to see it's too dark. But, yeah, so I got those welded on both sides. Got that done. Got that done. So, uh, I got a pretty good amount done today, considering how late I started. But, uh, I'm really happy about getting those hooks on there. Um. Uh, that was the main, you know, main thing I set out to do is get these hooks on. Um, and then I was like, you know what, I might as well go all out, go ahead and add trailer brakes. Because I need trailer brakes uh, to tow the Jeep comfortably. Um, not to say I haven't been towing without trailer brakes for a while, but it's, it's, it's nice having trailer brakes. Um, so, yeah. That was the main thing, and then that, while I'm at it, I was, might as well upgrade the lights and everything else. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Um, yeah, tomorrow, I'll just show the front welded, and yeah, that, that, like I said, that's that's it for the welding for now. But uh, yeah, uh, I will see you tomorrow, but it will be a couple minutes. So, I mean, it'll be like a second for y'all, so yeah. Alright, I got both of the uh, D-rings mounted. One there, and one over there. I welded both the top and the bottom, and I welded, that ain't going to focus, I welded the center. So weld at top, bottom, and center. Those aren't going anywhere. And that should be the end of this video. That's uh, pretty much all the welding done that can be done right now. I got uh, both front D-rings, both rear D-rings, and the ramp uh, hooks to put the ramps on, and the center part so I can put that uh, triple ID bar, which is the same as the ones I got there and there uh, which is it's a triple ID bar on the outside this in the center and then the four middle ones are, are a uh, re reverse light um they're actually decently bright I actually when I tow a trailer I have these both wired up to my reverse lights and then I have it double diode isolated on a switch and when I tow I turn the switch on and those both of those light up and it lights up the front of the trailer so I can see what I'm towing, uh, whether it be, you know, mostly it's my Jeep, but, you know, whatever else is on the trailer at night, I flip that switch on so I can look in my rearview mirror and look in my, uh, through my uh, reverse camera and, you know, just uh, through my side mirrors and I can see the load on the trailer, uh, you know, see if, uh, through my reverse camera, see if a strap is loose, a front strap's loose. Um, haven't, I haven't ever been pulled over for that. <clears throat> having these little lights on shining on the trailer 
Never been pulled over for it, um, which is good because it's not really blinding anybody. But, uh, yeah, it's a good good thing to keep an eye on the load. But, uh, yeah, should be it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.